There we go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, through the intercession of your blessed mother, we ask that you might continue to watch over and protect your mount. We ask that you might give uh, indeed um, graces to us through her hands so that we might carry out your mission of priestly formation, particularly in this propedeutic stage at Rother House. Uh, we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so welcome everybody. I think you probably know Father Hanley, who's the uh, new coordinator, uh, and uh, Mrs. Diane Favret, who's our uh, Director of Development and Alumni Relations. Um, and I'd like to share our screen with you, uh, which is a PowerPoint presentation, and take you through the presentation to give you an idea of what this propedeutic stage means, what Rother House is, and uh, how the alumni can support us uh, in this effort of introducing a new stage of pre-C formation. So let me share this screen with you. Does everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. That's a big house. <laughs> that is a big house. You got the first one there? Yeah. So this is the propedeutic stage, Blessed Stanley Rother House of Formation. You may recognize it because we're going to be using uh, a wing of the Daughters of Charity, St. Joseph House. And yeah, that's a, it's a big one. Um, now, uh, I think that the two of you are aware of the former, if you will, itinerary of pre -C formation. I, I think, Gene, when you went through it, there may not have been maybe one year of what we used to call pre-theology. When Kevin went through, it was two years. Um, the new program of priestly formation, version six, that came out last summer, uh, which is based on the guidelines provided, universal guidelines provided by the Holy See for priestly formation, has now a new itinerary or journey of priestly formation that's a bit different than any one of us ever experienced. Uh, and we're beginning that uh, you know, this summer. Um, we continue to have seminarians, of course, that enter the Mount either with a university degree and they first enter, uh, and at this point they would begin their two years of philosophy studies or what we used to call pre-theology, or we have college seminarians um, who finish their philosophical studies and enter directly into first theology here at the Mount. Um, we'll continue to have those two, if you will, kinds of seminarians, but the itinerary is going to be slightly different. With the university degree, now PPF 6, Program of PC Formation version 6, asks that there be a propedeutic stage or a preparatory stage as the first stage of PC formation before they even begin to study philosophy formally. And that's propedeutic stage, that program is going to be housed at what we're calling the Blessed Stanley Rother House of Formation. And we'll explain that in, in just a moment. So after that first stage, which has to be at least a year, then they move on to their two years of philosophy, all right? That we're now calling the discipleship phase. We, we kiddingly, you know, have a little jar uh, down in the rec room that if anybody here in the seminary community says the word pre-theologian, they have to put a dollar in the jar. Uh, we're supporting the uh, Catoctin Pregnancy Center. But um, it's, it's now, they, they've asked really that the pre-theology is, is not so much a, you know, they're, they're known then for just a, a preparation for another stage of a pre formation. But this stage of philosophy, the discipleship phase, has its own characteristics and own qualities. So we're calling them philosophers. So after they finish the propedeutic stage, they'll be in first philosophy and in second philosophy. After those two years of discipleship phase uh, and, and stage of pre formation, then they move on to theology. If they're coming from college seminary, they will have already done the propedeutic stage and done the discipleship stage. And so therefore they will enter directly into first theology. As you can see there, the, the, the four years of theology are now called the configuration stage. Um, and it might include for some diocese a pastoral year. We have a couple of dioceses that do that between second and third theology. Those dioceses are deciding now with this new year at the beginning whether they're, they're going to continue doing that pastoral year or not. Um, but as I said, mainly they, they do it between second and third theology. And that's known as the configuration stage. 
Now, there's a final stage of precinct formation that is also new, starting uh, with PPF6, and that's called the vocational synthesis stage. Now, most of us, most priests at this point were ordained deacons, usually at the end of third theology, if you remember, and then we had a, you know, a diaconate summer assignment, as the men continue to have today, and then during their fourth year of theology, they're deacons here at the Mount, and then at the end of their fourth year, they're ordained a priest. PPF6 says, no, they have to first finish the configuration stage. Therefore, they have to finish their theological studies before they're going to be ordained a deacon. So after they finish their, their, their uh, priestly formation in the seminary, then they return home to their diocese, then they're ordained a deacon, and they spend, therefore, the vocational synthesis stage in their home diocese. Um, they're asked to do that in a parish, and the pastor and or a delegate that the bishop uh, designates is the formator. So they no longer have a formator in the seminary. They're no longer doing seminary formation here at the Mount. They might be able to come back for, we might have conferences or retreats or things like that, but they have to spend prim their pr primary time in their diocese for six months at least uh, as a deacon, uh, and then they're ordained a priest after that. So this is the new itinerary, if you will. The sections in blue on this slide are what we're doing here at the Mount. Propodeutic stage, discipleship stage, and configuration stage, all right? So what we're really here to talk about is that first stage, the propodeutic stage. You're now seeing on your screen uh, a rather high view of the St. Joseph House, where, we, where the National Shrine of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton is housed. Um, Gene, you might remember this. When they first opened in 1964, and probably in the 60s and early 70s, there were a lot of sisters there. It was built it were, for, once upon a time. Yeah. Yeah. That, it was built for 300 to 350 sisters. Uh, and the uh, I was told that the what is now the, the, the National Shrine of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton was just their chapel. Um, but but as we know, uh, you know, the sisters have unfortunately decreased in numbers, and uh, the complex um, uh, sections of it are are unused. So the propodeutic stage, this new beginning stage, a non-academic year, which fo focuses on human and spiritual formation, is going to be housed in the sea wing. And so I have that circled in white there. That is what they consider the sea wing is now undergoing renovations uh, and will be ready uh, for seminarians to arrive in August. That's right. now the Blessed Stanley Rother House of Formation. Right. Um, we have entered into a lease with the Daughters of Charity for three floors of that sea wing. You're now looking at a picture of it from the backside, the parking lot. Um, it'll be what they call terrace floor, first floor, and second floor. So those three floors we are renovating now for our propodeutic stage seminarians. Um, they've now really moved from demolition to more construction. Um, we hope to have that construction they're really modifications. It's not a major, major construction going on, but modifications, and that should be finished by June the 15th. And then we'll have new furniture in there right after that. Um, and then some existing furniture that we have here at the Mount or that the sisters have in storage will also be used uh, on those three floors. Father Hanley is, uh, as the coordinator of Rother House, has already arrived here at the Mount and is working on all the particulars of the program. We have pretty much the content uh, settled and the schedule, and um, Dan's going to be talking about that in just a moment. And then other various aspects of that wing, such as security, maintenance, meals, cleaning, they're going to be coordinated with the Daughters of Charity. Some things the Mount will do, some things the Daughters of Charity will do, and other things we're going to expect the seminarians themselves to do, such as you know cleaning. The majority of the cleaning they will do as, as house jobs. All right. So now we move on to the content of this propodeutic stage, and I just want to hand this uh, over to Father Dan Hanley. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Monsignor. Fathers, thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's a blessing to have you with us, uh, and I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day uh, to hear about this. This is it's a very exciting uh, opportunity that we're given uh, to, I think, strengthen men in their formation and give them more of what they need to enter more deeply into discernment and, and conforming themselves to Jesus Christ, the priest, and readying themselves to be his ministers of mercy and love. Um, 
couple of things that this year is is a, is a year really kind of focusing not so much on the academics. They're not going to be doing, uh, for example, hard philosophy. They're not going to be doing kind of hard theology, but it's more a, of a year to kind of round the man out and to have him mature up in all aspects of his pre formation, both human, spiritual, intellectual, and pastoral formation, to where he can be, where he can really, really make the most of seminary life and prepare himself for the priesthood and be able to discern uh, uh, with this specific emphasis on human and spiritual formation. The human in the spiritual formation, the idea is really giving the man uh, the time and the tools to pray, forming him in prayer, uh, teaching him how to do a meditation and mental prayer, Lectio Divina, uh, teaching him how to enter into colloquy and dialogue with the Lord uh, in his quiet prayer. Also teaching him how to integrate uh, kind of his personal prayer life into the prayer of the church and specifically into the liturgy of the hours and most importantly into the holy sacrifice of the mass where the man kind of brings his heart into that moment, uh, into that prayer and prays uh, part of, as part of the body of Christ together with his brothers uh, in the seminary and of course the church throughout the whole world. Throughout the year, we'll be giving the men days of recollection Will they have good chunks of silence for a whole day and then also three retreats throughout the year as it kind of build up from a three-day silent retreat to a five-day silent retreat in advent to finally an eight-day directed silent retreat that'll take place uh, during lent and even during the days we're going to have at the end you'll see the orarium that we're, we're going to have in that orarium there are ample time for prayer and, uh, and and actually some time of quiet from the evenings all the way through until uh, breakfast after we do morning prayer and mass in the morning. Um, uh, another aspect of this in human formation, uh, a big part of it is going to be community life and and working with their hands. And we'll talk about that in just a bit. Uh, and Monsignor, you can, we can go to the next slide, I think. So we have just kind of the idea of understanding uh, some of our core principles. First and foremost, is as, as men are growing and becoming men of prayer, the idea really behind prayer is always friendship with Jesus Christ, getting to know him. Above all, knowing who he is, knowing his love for you, and then, and then living in accord with that love, seeing the world, seeing yourself, seeing others in light of God's love for you, and, and serving and loving him in, in light of that. Um, also with that, the, the, the idea also it, cultivating in all of us as a community, as a group of men who go about work, who go about different tasks, who go about recreation together, a, a supernatural outlook, which is really first and foremost, asking God for the grace to, to really live in the light of his love, to live by his mercy, and, and to be able to be able to give ourselves uh, to the community life. And then also cultivating discernment and the capacity to be able to see him to see God's work in our life, whether it's uh, through theological reflection as the men kind of look back on apostolic opportunities when they're out in their PFEs, uh, uh, pastoral field assignments, uh, or whether it's just something that took place and they examine their conscience at the end of the evening and took place in community life, seeing God present and active. Um, I think one of the central formative aspects uh, of, of the program also is going to be the way we live community life. Uh, the way we cultivate a family atmosphere and are really involved in each other's lives, responsible for each other, um, lifting each other up, uh, calling each other to account, uh, and really, really living a common life uh, in which men are really known by each other, uh, known by the, the, the formators that will be living with them, and also uh, know others. Uh, and so there's a, the cultivating friendship in Christ, men-centered on Christ, a brotherhood. Um, another of the core principles that we're, we're looking to cultivate really is and grow in is an affective maturity. Uh, and affective maturity, we can think about, it's first and foremost, self growing in self-knowledge and self-possession so that you can give yourself. The measure uh, of, of affective maturity is capacity for real friendship and, and self-giving. Um, and it, it entails, like, of course, understanding your family of origin, it, it, different interpersonal dynamics, um, self-possession, uh, especially when it comes to your, your, your generative capacity, your sexuality, uh, ordering your sexuality properly as a man, um, and being able to kind of live a life, a whole, a whole life. We go to the next slide, please. Yeah. 
kind of on a on a, on a really kind of applied level, uh, one of the things we'll be doing is is a lot of uh, a lot more manual labor. Uh, seminary and, and priesthood sometimes involve so much intellectual labor, so much time at a desk, so much time talking. Uh, so we want to give the men an opportunity to use their bodies uh, first and foremost to kind of support themselves in their own environment. We'll be partnering with a farmer in the area uh, where hopefully we'll get some of our food from that partnership as well that we, we're going to eat. So the men will be actually working on a working farm and um, also we'll be keeping our own area. We're, we're going to, we're not going to have uh, um, cleaning people come in. We're going to clean everything from our shower rooms to our individual rooms to all the common rooms. So we're going to keep our own space um, and we're gonna keep it well. And that's again, part of that family life, but it's also gonna be uh, laboring together. And then much of our um, outreach, uh, our pastoral our pastoral work will involve going out in groups and doing work. Uh, for example, we're going to be helping out up at the uh, Our Lady of Lords Shrine up on the Mount. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the woods and, and with the gardens and different things like that, where guys will be getting their hands dirty. At the same time, they'll be uh, kind of shoulder to shoulder with the pilgrims that are coming there and be able to interact with them. So it's kind of a beautiful combination of you know, doing physical labor and then at the same time, uh, having some spiritual engagement with people. Something that probably many people have heard about is, is that there's a movement more and more and a good one uh, to detach men from dependence on social media and, and teach them how to really use information technology uh, to better their life and not to be used by and dominated by it. So we're going to begin the year with a fast from social media, fast from computers. Guys will keep their computers and, and phones in one spot and, and only and use them very, very limited way for their just for their needs to keep up with family and maybe do their banking and things like that, uh, be in touch with their diocese. But otherwise, there will be a very limited use of, of, of social media and it'll be in limited space um, and give them, give them, give them kind of uh, uh, what they need to kind of grow in detachment, understand the place it had in their life and be able to understand the place it should have in their life and formulate uh, the virtues and the plan the, to live by those virtues uh, as they go back out and use uh, use technology because we're not, you know, the idea we're not forming them into, we're not forming Luddites. Uh, guys need to be priests. They need to be able to use, you know, electronic calendars. They need to be able to use social media to be in touch with their people. And, and so they have to do that, but they have to do it in a way that's healthy. Uh, another kind of value we're going to be promoting is uh, that we're not going to find our recreation through the screen and we're not going to mediate our primary relationships through screens. I mean, sometimes you have to do that. But when we're at the house, we're not going to have a bunch of guys sitting around looking at their phones. We're going to have a bunch of guys sitting around interacting with each other. Uh, we're going to try and entertain ourselves, playing music and things like that. So that's another uh, kind of behind this as well. Finally, throughout the year, uh, men will be exposed uh, to priestly identity. In some in some ways, at the beginning of the year, it'll be a, a more natural, subtle way in which we'll be inviting priests to come and just spend a dinner with us and maybe talk about their life as a priest. Talk, we'll have priests come in from you know, various stages of priesthood, various perspectives about the priesthood and share with the men how they're living their priesthood, the joys, uh, maybe even some of the challenges that they're having and, and allow the men to have conversations with them, uh, both kind of in small groups at the dinner table, but then as a larger group, maybe guys can very informally ask questions and have a conversation about the priesthood. We'll be doing that throughout the year. But then also uh, towards the end of the year, uh, I, after we've done a lot of the kind of the other formation uh, aspects of formation with the men, we'll be, we'll be kind of focusing more uh, on priestly identity through workshops on what it, what the priest is, what it means to live as a priest, and workshops on celibacy as well. And so those will be a part of it. Also, as the men go through, one of the kind of emphases is going to be on um, on having the men grow in scriptural literacy, and then also just doctrinally going through the catechism so that they come out as as men who know revealed salvation history in the in the Bible and also know their Catholic doctrine. And I think that's, I think we'll go back to Monsignor now. Oh, not yet. This is our Arvarium, <laughs> like I told you guys about. Just the Arvarium. So you can see yes. our Arvarium here. <laughs> and I kind of did, did a little preview of it. 
one of the things to notice besides the times for prayer, you can see in there, but also you'll look at the, you know, we have some standard kind of classroom activity periods in the morning, but then there's a chunk of time in the afternoon and that's there specifically to give the men uh, kind of areas to explore uh, their own growth uh, and also give them a sense of, of value of time. How are they going to be using those times? You know, what, what's the, how are they going to use the times to, to grow? How are they use the times to recharge themselves so that they can really engage uh, in life? And, and, um, and also you notice the silence that takes place after night prayer. I think that's, we can now I'll go back to Monsignor. Okay, thank you very much, Thanks. Father Hannah. That was great. Um, so now let's talk about some of the specifics. Uh, Father Hanley had said, uh, you know, that the content of the program is going to be rather involved. Um, the building itself is going to have to then be uh, built in such a way that we can do all of the things that we just described. Um, and as you can see here, these are some of the architectural designs. This is what's being built out now. We're going to have a, a chapel, our own chapel over there. You can see that in the center, a classroom, a reading room, lounge, two pre-suites, dining room, common area, activities room, offices. Um, and there's going to be, at this point, 35 residential rooms. There's actually more room in that C-wing. It's a huge complex, as I, I think we all know. Uh, but right now, we're fitting it out to 35 residential rooms. Um, and here are some pictures. Uh, these are, I think, a couple of weeks old, but um, or at least some of them are. You can see that they the, the wing had been used about a year and a half, ago, up until about a year and a half ago as a nursing home. So we want to kind of shift things around a little bit so it doesn't look so much like a nursing home and looks a little <laughs> more like a home for, for seminarians. And so that's what we're doing now. Uh, and then this is where we, we, we really need your help. And I'm going to ask Diane to kind of step in here too, because um, in order to do all of this, um, we need help from the alumni, from our benefactors, uh, just to get this up and going. It's something that we all have to do, all seminaries have to do to begin this propedeutic stage. We have a fabulous program and a lot of dioceses are responding to it, but we need your help. We need your help in your prayers. We need your help financially. We need your help to maybe even put us in contact with people that can help us with this campaign. So I'll, I'll hand it over to, today, to Diane and we can talk about um, some of those uh, that, that assistance that we need. Thank you, Monsignor Baker. And thank you, Father Gene and Father Kevin for joining us this morning. We appreciate you giving up the, your time. Um, well, first, I want to mention that we're um, very honored, actually, to be calling this and naming this the Blessed Stanley Rother House of Formation. Of course, all of you know, class of 63, we're all, we await his um, sainthood. We think he'd be very, very proud that he has something here near and dear to his heart, close to the mount, that we're naming um, this propedeutic stage um, after him. And we are hearing a lot of good remarks and a good excitement um, around that. But as Monsignor mentioned, this is a $5 million goal. It's um, over three years. The campaign actually started back in September uh, with, the, with the, um, the goal, if you will, to raise 2.5 million by the end of 2023. So we're currently at 1,617,938 from 47 donors. And those 47 donors make up 100% of our seminary board and 100% of our rector's council uh, members. It also represents nine of our 23 partner dioceses that have contributed to the campaign and some friends of uh, Mount St. Mary Seminary. We're, we're now entering more into the public phase of the campaign, if you will, while reaching out to our alumni. That's what we're starting with these. We've had, uh, this is our third day of Zooms with alums. Um, and some, yesterday we had, I think, four attending and the other day we had two. So we're moving forward with that, but we're asking for um, our alumni support. And there's various ways to, to help support, helping us reach out to people, if you have classmates that perhaps you could join together with that would consider making a gift to support the campaign, we have um, memorial gifts, name gifts, if you will, that have been um, proven to be uh, successful because we have so far nine have um, already committed to, to a name gift in honor of maybe a family member. We have uh, one family that 
is, um, I mean, one, one of our classmates who recently passed, they're going to join together with some family and they're looking at a name gift right now in memory of, it was Father Daly who passed back in January. Um, and with this being a three-year campaign, we're down to now 32 months left. So just to give you an idea, we can, um, well, many of our gifts are pledge gifts. In other words, they, they said, well, I'll pledge $10,000. And then over the next 32 months, my payments, um, the payments would, would be about $312. We have $5,000 gifts. That's about $156 a month and, and down, if you will, divided by that. We had a gentleman last night, um, one of your classmates who was, uh, not your classmates, but one of our SEMs who was very interested in getting some classmates together to make a gift um, in honor of their, their class. And also very excited that it is named after Blessed Stanley Rother. So our, our, our biggest challenge is, of course, it is going to be a challenge to reach these goals, but we have about a little over 880,000 to reach by the end of this fiscal year, um, calendar year. And then the other 250,000 will be more for program support and um, endowment. So we have short-term and long-term goals to ensure the sustainability of this very important program. So our immediate goal right now, as I said, is to raise uh, the remaining 250,000 by the end of this calendar year. So by the end of 2023. So we're asking if each of you could prayerfully consider making a gift and, and helping us outreach to other alums if you have family members or friends that you know of that would support this campaign and support this efforts and the um, the importance of it, we welcome you know to if you want to put them in touch with with me or with Monsignor Baker, or Father Hanley, they welcome them to come and and see the facility, tour the facility, tour the seminary, get to know us. Uh, that's that's kind of what we're looking for to help asking our alums to to help us. Um, make this happen, if you if you will. Um, we are very very excited about it, and even if you would take, um, you know, take one of the seminary class se seminarian rooms or um, a gift at 10k. So far, we have six now that have been identified that they would like to reserve it, and some of them are going to do it in memory of their late father or in memory of their class, and there would be a you know a plaque. Um, that would represent that. So we're um, asking for your help in any way that you can to help us reach this and, and help support this. We're going to um, be sending a, a, a brochure uh, that explains the, the program and also a tear off for giving that's going to be mailed in early May. And we're, we'll be continuing to send some updated emails of the, the progress as the construction is completed on the, the Rother House and ask, just keep, every, keep our alumni and our friends at the seminary informed uh, about how, how it's going. But if, if either of you have any questions or want to talk to me separately about some people that you may have, or, or again, if Monsignor Baker or Father Hanley, if you choose to speak with them, we welcome that. We, we actually need that. So we, we appreciate that. And um, we, we, uh, we feel confident that we will get there. This is a very exciting program for the Mount. Uh, as, as I hear over and over whenever I say, I work at Mount St. Mary Seminary, oh, those, those are the best priests come from the Mount. And we know that, and I think you probably feel that as well. And I feel it every single day. So we're um, thankful that, in, that you'll consider helping us and reaching out to us and talking to your possible fellow classmates. And you'll be continuing to hear from us about this as well. Thank you. Great, thank you, Diane. And, and this next slide uh, outlines some ways in which particularly as priests, I think you and, and other alumni could help us. Uh, Dan and I put together a little bit of a, a wish list and you and I both, you a priest know um, that uh, there's, often things around parishes that uh, could be used elsewhere. Um, and sometimes they just need a little cleaning, a little replating, um, but we're looking for some things in order to uh, 
uh, supply our chapel. And if you happen to have anything or know where we can find some of these things at a very economic price uh, or um, even given as, as a donation, you know, a we're looking for a monstrous and a luna, for instance. Uh, we're looking for an altar crucifix. We're looking for a credence table, a thurible and bow, a ciborium, the aspergillium set. If you happen to have things like that around your parish or know uh, in a warehouse or another parish, please feel free to just take a picture of it and send it to, to Father Hanley there at uh, d.f.hanley at msmary.edu or give us a call. And, and that also could be a great donation, a great way to support Rother House. Um, and then finally, uh, we're ready. We're going to be ready to open in August of, uh, of 2023, August the 15th on the Solemnity of the Assumption. We ask you for your continued support and prayers and expect uh, coming from Diane uh, uh, that brochure that she spoke about and an appeal um, for you to prayerfully consider support for this effort. Um, but finally, I, I would also say that if you happen to know someone in your parish or among your circle of friends who could uh, get behind us in a very major way, a real high capacity donor that would love to be able to support the seminary where you went. Um, we're more than happy to speak with them. If they're not familiar with the seminary, we can have them out for a visit or come to evening prayer on Sunday evening. Um, and we've been happy just to enter into dialogue with some people that you might know, family members, friends, um, that could really, uh, in a very serious way, uh, uh, support us so that we can reach our, our goal of 5 million. Okay, so that ends our little presentation. Let me stop sharing our screen and see if um, either Gene or Kevin, you might have any questions or comments uh, about it. I was impressed by a couple of things that I'm happy to see. Uh, one is that you're going to be teaching from the very get-go the divine lectionary the you know, lex, lex, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. That's something that wasn't around in the seminary on my day, Lexio Divina. And it's really a tremendous help to me in my preaching to have learned that over different resources I've read over the past 10, 15 years. But it, it, to be able to learn that in the right time and use it even in the seminary, prepare them would be wonderful. And I love the fact that you're going to detox the people from social media. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. that's so essential. Everywhere I go, everyone's sitting at tables and they've got their phones in their hands. It's just so sad to see the mm -hmm. art of conversation is gone. You know what I mean? Yes. So, and that's and, that's a gateway to other things too that aren't so good sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Social media. And, ah. and you know, these men have been raised in that kind of culture and even unfortunately family life that you know they're texting one another at the family dinner table. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so, so. They need to be detoxed, that's for yeah. sure. I'm glad to see helpful. that you're doing. Uh, thank you very much for uh, all the information and also just the updates and everything regarding the structure and, and also the immediate uh, uh, financial needs. Uh, Father Hanley, I'm just curious to mm -hmm. what the composition of the faculty of the House of Formation will look like. Uh, understandably, you'll have, understandably, you're the coordinator, uh, but uh, who, uh, not so much who is a name, but what would be the positions of either full-time faculty or staff or adjunct faculty and staff that'll be supporting you? Yeah, great question. So th there's a couple things. First, we have, there's an a, assistant coordinator who's a layman, but he's a wonderful guy. Uh, we've already hired him and he's really, really very, very fine. He, in fact, he had been in the seminary, so he Kevin, understands Kevin, seminary I remember life. Brendan Johnson, Brendan Johnson. Do you remember Brendan Johnson, Kevin? He worked at campus ministry, I think even when you were here. He worked with uh, Father Brian I, I Nolan. So. Yeah, uh, if fa Father Brian Nolan comes, you know, he 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 worked. They worked together, and Father Father Brian's a good friend of mine, so became highly recommended by people I trust. A and he's he's a, a good man, and again, he'll be he's he's got a he's got a degree in theology, a uh, master degree in theology, so he can help with some of the even some of the formation classes, and he brings a perspective of a good married man um, with a family uh, uh, there. But also some of the other partnerships we have is we're bringing, we're partnering with the Avila Institute as well as the professors. So we have professors here that will be coming over there. They might not be living there. We may have one of the guys, one of the priests from here might live over there. We're seeing about that, just how that's going to work out. Um, but we'll have a regular confessor 
uh, from our seminary going over. So the guys will have access to confession almost every day. Um, also, spiritual directors will be the same pool of spiritual directors that the guys have at the Mount. So we can have some continuity from, from here to where the guys, this is one formation program. This is, this is an aspect of the formation program. So we'll be having the, so the fact that, for example, uh, Monsignor McLean Cummings, who's our spiritual, house spiritual director, will be, he and I are partnering on a lot of stuff that we're going to do, kind of the order of form, of spiritual formation conferences we'll be going through and kind of dividing them up. Uh, he'll be coming over doing doing a lot on discernment of spirits with the men early in. So discernment of spirits, Lexia Divina, discernment of spirits are two of the major early things we'll be doing with the men. Um, and we want to get that kind of in there. So the lot, but lots of, and we're also partnering with CUA and 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 a professor from there, a philosophy professor, but Father Bob Gall about he's going to be working with the media, and uh, so we have kind of other things that will be coming in uh, uh, to partner from the outside. Because of what we can do where we are, we're going to kind of try and take the riches of the church and and draw them to ourselves, draw them to a formation program. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Sure, you're welcome. Yeah, good question. Great, wonderful. So this is really the, the beginning of our rolling it out more publicly uh, of not only what we're doing at Rother House, but the needs that we have. And we really appreciate, thank you so much, Father Gene and Father Kevin for spending, taking your time to spend with us. Um, and uh, feel free to just share this with others. It's certainly very public. We've got it up on our website um so that we can kind of garnish interest and then finally when you're encouraging vocations too I, I think it's always helpful to know oh, what what would this young man that i'm encouraging to consider the priesthood will experience when he first begins thanks for sharing all this information it's wonderful yeah we're going to make one of these meetings of course available we've recorded them all so we're going to make it available to all of the alum and our partner bishops and vocation directors too, in case they wanna get some more information. We've already met with a number of bishops and vocation directors in a Zoom meeting like this to go through the particulars of the program. Uh, and we've been in communication with them via email as well. Uh, but we wanna just continue to get this word out to our sure. whole Mount community. Okay. Wonderful, yeah. anything else? Are we, any other well, comments? We'll be praying for you and your Thank success. You. Yeah, we need that. Yeah. All right. Well, wonderful. Hope to see you both at some point in the near future. And and thanks to Father Hanley and, and Diane, too, for all of your, your work here. Um, bless, may Blessed Sandy Rother uh, intercede for us. And maybe if we just conclude with a, uh, a glory be to glorify the Blessed Trinity for all his, his blessings, especially in this Easter season. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, Son. and to the Son, Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed Stanley Rother, pray, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless. Okay. God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, God bless. God bless.